Is it just me or is it kind of weird to hear Misha Collins' actual voice before the uh, the French Connection episode, the one where he's on the phone on texting? Oh, it's great to be part of the guys. I forget that Misha Collins does not sound like a garburator sometimes. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for The Rapture, episode 20 of Supernatural Season 4. This episode has a few different stories going on, but the main key focus is Jimmy Novak. Not only him having Castiel leave his body, but also his origin and his recommitment to the war with Castiel. The episode starts with Dean having a dream and Castiel handing him a piece of paper saying, meet me here, I have something to tell you. But otherwise, I do like this backstory on Jimmy Novak. I do like how we get a little bit more attached to the character even though the person who's possessing him is his real character now in the show and as we're gonna see i don't think jimmy novak's ever gonna come back in its real entirety but then again when we go into season six to ten we're gonna see a lot of deviation with castiel's powers but that's gonna be like the biggest thing of that whole arc anyways i like how he goes from a completely pendant man a religious believer to a guy who couldn't give a shit about the angels by the end of it he has had enough of it, but in the end, he is still willing to take care of his family. Because in the end, Jimmy Novak is a nice guy. I love it when he comes home and his wife is clearly distraught about the whole thing, him going missing for a while and also talking like a cuckoo guy for, oh, quite a bit before he all of a sudden disappeared. And he says, you know, what's ever comfortable with you. I want you to be comfortable. And that's, that's a sign of a good guy. I like that part of his character. And I also love it that he wants to eat food. That is going to come back into My Bloody Valentine when Castiel's eating. He's like, it's not me who's eating, it's Jimmy. Jimmy loves food. Other part of this episode, and this is the one that I actually completely forgot how kind of out of nowhere this comes from, is Sam's obsession with demon blood. At this time, we've kind of shown that he does have a fancy for it. At the same time, you don't really get that whole I'm heebie-deebie on them jeebies sort of blood addiction that we see him do in this episode where he goes out to the vending machine, doesn't go to the bathroom, or not even the car, just goes out in the public. <laughs> I thought that was a little odd, but in the, the severity of it, the excessiveness of it, it's just kind of like, oh, well, that was sudden. <laughs> you could have kind of established this a little bit in the previous episode, but they did fight ghouls. I don't know, I thought that was just a kind of an odd uh, thing to add on to the end of the episode. I thought that was kind of peculiar. And I liked how at first Dean's just like, wow, you're full on sucking a dude. He doesn't really make a commitment to it until the very end of the episode where Bobby calls him up. And then when they lock Sam in the room, in the safe room, I remember like, oh yeah, he tries to go cold turkey. They try to put him through some Wrecking Room of a Dream, train spotting sort of hallucination sort of bit. And I love how that episode ends. And once again, continuing that arc of so many of these episodes are to be continued kind of status at the end of each episode. So while the episode does have a little bit of detractors, like, for instance, Castiel's whole bit about, well, kind of revealing himself, never being revealed, the demon's weird plan, the one who takes over his wife, is shoots Jimmy Novak. Like, that was cool. They're like, damn, that's great. Holy shit, that's, some, that's a pretty cool little moment. And then she's like, yeah, go waste the kid, and just walks off for no reason. And while I love the overhead shot of watching the demon walk towards Jimmy Novak's daughter, the whole time I'm thinking, you had a gun. It's drama for drama's sake, and I didn't like that bit. It works well in terms of Sam getting his powers back to use it to get uh, the demon out of Jimmy Novak's wife, but it does seem a little sloppy. That part, Sam's very, very sudden addiction to demon blood. And at this point, you're slowly starting to see Ruby's plan of being a drug dealer, kind of being forthwith with uh, giving Sam his hit. But when we come to the whole twist with Ruby, in the final episode of the season, I'm gonna have a bit of a thing to talk about, but we'll leave that for later. Otherwise, I like the Rapture, I like Jimmy Novak's uh, story, I like his origin, I like how he recommits to Cass. His being pulled away to heaven is a little bit eh. And then also Sam's severity to the demon addiction, uh, to the demon blood addiction, is a bit sudden, but it works well for the rest of the episode. And of course, it ends on a really good cliffhanger. So while the episode is a bit messy, it takes it down a little bit from a six but it's still a very, very solid episode. So in the end, I'm gonna give The Rapture a five out of seven. I like it. I like how we get a little bit more backstory about Jimmy. 
even though it's not going to matter. And it's kind of interesting to see Claire as not the actress she would be in later seasons, who has gone on to do pretty well for herself, if I'm correct. But anyways, I asked you guys about your comments about this episode, so let's read some off now. The Rapture, who is called and why, is an important element of the apocalypse. Not one I ever re-watched, though. Castiel, the character and his actor, became so unwatchable during the Dab era that I can't handle an entire episode devoted to him. Oh, wow, actually, that's true. It's unfortunate what would happen to Cast later on in the show, because really, after Season 5, his use, hell, even Season 7, his use is going to go completely out the window. The Rapture is the first episode to really deal with what happens to the possessed, those possessed by angels. You see Jimmy go from a faithful believer to being completely done with the angel deal. It's sad to see that he sacrificed a lot, but in the end, it's fulfilling to see that his sacrifice does help Cass to grow as a character in the end. In the original side, Jimmy is not so faithful and in fact feels that Cass is hiding something from him. Both Dean and Cass bond in, this, in the sides. And Jimmy tells Dean that he feels that Cass is hiding something from him and feels Cass doubts his own role in, this, in the mission. This setup in the sides of uh, the show, I think, shows that this wavering was present much earlier and Dean was the one to push it to the final play in the Lucifer Rising. Yep, that's true. No, uh, everything, like, Castillo kind of gets a reaffirmation, but even he realizes that things aren't going the way they should be, especially in Lucifer Rising. When I saw the title of this episode, I was admittedly confused since the Rapture is more uh, an event during the apocalypse in Christian mythology. Putting that aside, though, I really enjoy this episode for focusing on, on Castiel's Vessel family, the Novaks. It's very biblically relatable when angels come to people in the Christian Bible where God had to work for them to do. It also is very real when a husband is calling on God to do something and that a religious family feels divided. I love the drama when the demons come to the home wrecking, uh, to the home wrecking things up more for the family. Castiel becoming this emotionalist soldier after trying to turn to Dean for help after discovering the real agenda behind the angels was bewildering in the, white, in the right way. But the real heartbreaking moment was seeing Sam drink demon blood and Dean and Bobby locking him in the panic room. Yeah, I love how the episode ends. That's a great bit. But yeah, you're true about the kind of the development of Castiel, how he kind of gets reaffirmed and it, it just, it's perplexing. And you're just like, what's going to happen? And like the, these last three episodes are very, very good. Highlights from the Rapture. Great acting. Misha did a fantastic job of making Jimmy distinctly different from Castiel in every way from posture to voice to facial tics. The scene where Castiel turns around and tells Claire, I'm not your father, was very effective at demonstrating Cass's cold and detached otherworldliness. Sam having withdrawals for the entire episode and then finally going beast mode and feeding on a demon in front of everyone. I like that Dean wasn't very angry at the revelation, just utterly and completely defeated. One of my favorite storylines in the entire series, which is going to escalate further in the next couple of episodes. Yes, it is. The twist at the very end when Bobby calls for help only to lack Sam in the panic room and have him go cold turkey. Small tangent, Claire as Castiel's vessel is an interesting premise and it wouldn't have been, wouldn't have been cool to see more of. It never made sense to me that angels would identify so strongly with either gender that way humans do. That kind of just takes away from the idea of that their true forms are terrifying, celestial, and beyond comprehension. Hmm. Yeah, that's, nope, that's actually kind of a cool idea. Too bad that angels will be completely defunct later on the show. But no, I actually like that kind of idea. I, I, I like where you're going there. The Rapture, honestly, is not a bad episode, but it's not an episode I'm particularly excited about, especially when I'm re-watching season four. I always want to skip this so I get to the juicy stuff at the end. The placement of this episode is mostly the problem, something that Supernatural had a major issue with as a whole. It's the same because the episode presents a nice story about Jimmy, and it also explores Castiel's character and duality, something that Jeremy Carver does extremely well. With that said, he also brought us Claire in this episode, one of the few elements that he completely botched in his era. Um, but I don't know, I, I felt that... I, I, I didn't, admittedly didn't like Claire in the show either. I, it took a while for their writing to get better because she was just so nee, but eventually it did get a little bit better. But I, I feel, I kind of understand where you're coming from in terms of the placement of this episode, but at the same time, it's kind of a necessary triple arc. Remember when Supernatural could do triple arcs, or quadruple arcs? Um, yeah, this episode is the building point for when the levee breaks and then Lucifer rising. So while it's not like the, but it's setting the, the, the groundwork for these next two episodes. Okay, thank you guys for your comments. Now we've got two more episodes. 
got two more. We've got the Levy Breaks. This is the episode where they try to make Sam go cold turkey on demon blood. So make sure to give me guys his thoughts about that episode, and I will read those off in the next review. Either way, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. Otherwise, see you guys next week. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.